What's up guys, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports and today I'm joined by Scott from Icon who came over to basically talk us through some of their different suspension options for the Ranger. And they were also kind enough to actually bring the Ranger build down here with us so we'll be able to get some good shots of this truck in the shop. But let's just get straight into it. So when it comes to building up your Ranger, a lot of guys are you know looking for different systems for what they might want in their vehicle to swap out coilover shocks, get something with a little more lift, you know, a little bit better drivability off-road. Uh, what kind of systems do you guys offer for this truck? Basically, we offer the, the system in multiple different stages, okay. and they're all, for the most part, the same ride height, the same ride quality on road, and it's all very similar in the stance and look of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. In fact, you look at this one, you know, if you had a stage one on it, it would look pretty much the same. So mm -hmm. it's all about the performance you're looking for and really what you're looking to do with the truck. Okay. Your most basic system, start with our stage one, would include an internal reservoir coilover like this here, mm -hmm. and our, what we call our standard travel length, which okay. is the proper length to work with the stock upper control arm. It's a 25% travel increase uh, with just all bolt-on, uh, which makes the ride quality drastically better in addition to all the improved shock damping. And then that's paired with a 2.0 rear shock. Again, internal reservoir, uh, good shock all the way around, just sure. uh, not the high-end performance capability you get with a two and a half inch line. Sure, a little bit more entry level for a guy who just wants something with maybe a little bit extra lift and a little beefier. Exactly, good ride quality. Now, if you go out and you want to beat on it in the dirt, you can find its limitations without trying terribly hard. So sure. that's where the upper stages really come into play. Honestly, most of the time I recommend uh, our stage two kit over the stage one. Okay. Essentially, it's the same. Uh, the front coilover is still an internal reservoir like this, uh, but it is our extended travel. And that requires being paired with an aftermarket upper arm like ours here with a higher angle ball joint to allow for more down travel to get that extended uh, length going so it doesn't bind up the stock one and break it. Okay. At that point, it's a 35% travel gain over stock. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it gets you that little bit of extra reach, keep the tires on the ground. Correct. And then the main purpose of the UCAs is to actually correct alignment issues that develop as we go taller in the ride height range. So it's just a bonus that on this platform, the limiting factor is also the stock upper arm, so we can just run a longer shock when we do that. Yeah, so, knocking it both out at once. Exactly, and that really, the combination of the better alignment and the travel really makes the front end feel drastically better uh, from a performance standpoint, for sure. I do recommend that. Okay, awesome. And then moving up from stage two, what kind of things change once you get past that threshold? So yeah, the stage three kit includes the, uh, the same extended uh, travel uh, IFP front coilovers with the upper arm, but then we have a remote reservoir 2.0 rear shock for added performance. Okay. Better heat dissipation. So that's a good one for someone that's looking for mild trails and stuff like that. Um, we also changed out the bump stop as part of that, that kit as well for a more compliant one in the rear. Oh, okay. It's actually the same one we use uh, on the Ford Raptor. Nice, uh, same a, kind of materials and stuff. Yeah, this, the, the OE bump stop from the Ford Raptor um, is a lot more compliant and makes a big difference in, the, in how that, uh, that rides. Nice, that's very smart. Mm -hmm. Um, stage four, moving on up, we're going to upgrade to remote reservoirs in the front. Uh, no adjustment yet from a CDC valve standpoint. And in the rear shocks also step up to the two and a half inch piggyback reservoir like this guy here. Then we also include that bump stop and everything as well. Stage five upgrades everything to the CDC valve front and rear. So we have both of these guys nice. for yeah, that, that compression and adjustability. Everything. Exactly. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And really quick, for those of you guys watching, if you're curious about the CDC valve stuff and what that offers, we have a separate video where we kind of went more in depth and Scott explained all the details behind how that works, the engineering and how you sort of tune it for your vehicle. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But as you said, that's once you get into the kind of the higher range kits. And so it's probably somebody who's looking to get a little bit more aggressive and spend some more time out in the dirt, I'd assume. More performance, exactly. Again, the ride quality on around town is very similar amongst all the kits. So it's yeah. really hard to tell the difference unless you get into the adjustable versions where you can soften them up and do different things. But the baseline tuning is all very similar. So these kits are the guys that want to go off and, and use it in the dirt. And really you're going to be happier with the performance that it gives you because it's very easy to get comfortable and get that <laughs> confidence once the shocks are working the way you want and sure. you just go naturally just that much faster. So. Yeah. <laughs> nope, makes plenty of sense. So the other thing, uh, obviously you mentioned with those kits where you're getting the extended travel, you need to get an arm in there. And so we've got two of your arms here with the, the billet and both are delta joint. Could you kind of explain what the, the difference is between those uh, for these kits? Absolutely. So the, the baseline idea behind them is to correct that, that alignment. And mm -hmm. we do it in two different ways with these. Our tubular arms are a fixed arm. We correct the geometry in their design. All right. uh, and so basically the ball joints repositioned and everything relative to where the placement on the stock arm. The billet arm does the same thing from a basic design standpoint, but it is fully adjustable while it's installed on the truck for caster and camber, which is really handy for a whole lot of different situations because now you can adjust the upper and lower arm independently 
and really fine tune alignment for nice. you know solve tie rub issues or if you want a very specific alignment setup, um, that will allow you to do that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so most guys are probably going to be approaching more on the tubular side of things where it's already tuned for their vehicle, but this does give you that additional uh, parameters that you can kind of play with. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's most of the time it comes down to price point. You know, there's yeah. a roughly $500 difference or so between the two. From a performance standpoint, if you want to get real down into it, we use polyurethane bushings on okay. the frame pivots on the tube arms, and the billet arms use a rod end, a spherical bearing rod end. Okay. And so that is a zero deflection joint so it's a hard mount works really well in aggressive driving because there's no deflection from the bushings sure the suspension feels that much tighter you know it's kind of a trade-off that sure. hard mount also will transfer a little bit more vibration in the chassis than this guy will but um you know that's uh, that's the price you pay for that performance really. sure yeah give and take you gotta yeah. figure out what works for you exactly so uh real quick obviously we've got your guys's ranger behind us what kind of system is this truck running on it right now Basically, it's our stage five with, with some extra prototype goodies that we've got going on. It has our front coilovers with the CDC valve and the rear 2.5s with the CDC valve as well. What is different than what you'll see if, once we look up underneath there, we have upgraded our reservoirs to our new fin reservoirs okay. for better heat dissipation and really awesome looks. Also, we have our new upcoming hardware change for the CDC valve. We got the different color knobs and everything. Mm -hmm. Function, the way everything operates is all the same. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think it looks really good. I am liking the, the new updates on the suspension there. The dials are awesome. The fin resis look great underneath. So super, super nice kit for sure. Awesome. Now you did mention some prototype stuff that's on this vehicle and some things I know you were doing on the back end as far as leaf springs. Can you kind of go into detail on what you guys are working on there? Sure. You may already be familiar with our RXT system that we offer for the Ford Raptor and we do one for a Tacoma and the Tundra as well. We're basically taking that and extending it to the Ranger. So the rear will have a full leaf spring that's multi-rate just like our other platforms. So you can configure it based on the kind of load you're carrying. And then paired with that will be what we call the RXT shock, which uses a different style of mounting on the rod end to allow for extra travel. Basically, okay. it allows us to cram a longer shock into the same factory mounts than would otherwise fit. Nice. And so we can get more travel and uh, I don't remember exact gain on the Ranger yet because we're still working that out, but uh, like on the Raptor, it's huge. It's like a 50% gain oh, and wow. we're in the 25% range for the Toyota platform. So mm -hmm. it makes a significant difference in the overall performance because the fronts, for the most part, once we get all this stuff on, they'll eat up whatever you want to throw at them, but the rear, sure. it, it was that next limiting factor and that holistic engineering that we've always tried to do, that's what we find the next thing that's the problem fix that and then there's always the next one is just keeps moving on down the line. Sure, yeah, crossing that threshold to just get it more and more dialed as it, you work your way down. Exactly. And it makes a big difference. You'll see um, we have the side-by-side -side comparison videos of a, of a stock Ranger and then a Ranger running honestly a basic stage two kit and it's a it's a very noticeable difference in how it handles. Yeah, I imagine right, right off the bat you can you can see that there's a, a performance change. Mm -hmm. So still talking in terms of modifications on the rear end, you had mentioned something about a different pad system for the leaf spring? Correct. The The stock leaf spring on the, the Ranger is, uh, is quite aggressive and is really good at load carrying, but for off-road performance, it's a bit stiffer than we would really like. If you're not looking to change that out for an aftermarket one like our upcoming RXT spring, what we do offer and it comes with our two and a half inch rear shocks is a, uh, they're snubber pads that go on the overload leaf. And if you look underneath there, the stock ones are quite tall. Mm -hmm. And so it engages really early in the travel and causes that spring rate to ramp up very fast. Yeah, it's exponential. Yes, and so what we're basically doing, we ha include Delrin, which is a very hard polymer, um, machinable. And so it's very low profile and just replaces those. So it engages that overload later and makes the, the overall ride that much smoother. Nice. Now, if you're if you're using it for payload purposes, that'll probably cause a little bit more squat when you load it down. But uh, technically, all the capacities and everything all stay the same as well. Excellent. Yeah, that's a really nice little upgrade, especially for guys that probably aren't hauling a lot of heavy equipment in the back of their Ranger and exactly. just want that that bit of progressivity in the spring. Right. Yeah, it just makes it ride that much better, and it's very simple and expensive um, little little piece. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I want to circle back around a little bit here at the end to talk about something you mentioned earlier on, and that's that a lot of these kits kind of sit at around the same height and have similar adjustability as far as stance is concerned on the truck. So can you kind of explain that a little bit? Sure. 
So the, the front coilovers, and this would be the internal reservoir or remote reservoir versions, they're all adjustable for between zero or stock height sure. up to th about three and a half inches over stock. Okay. The ultimate height you want to set it up at is really up to you. We recommend generally as the height that they come preset at right out of the box, which is approximately two inches. Okay. That'll usually sit level with the stock height rear end and give you the best ride quality in terms of the placement of the shock and the arms within their travel range. You're kind of right in the middle. As you go taller, ride quality doesn't really change drastically as long as you don't exceed our maximum setting. But then you're going to need to lift the rear a little bit at that three and a half inch height to have level. You know, okay. you'll have that uh, that. No, that yeah, you don't want to get the, the SoCal lean exactly. and down. Yeah. yeah. So sure. right now, I believe we offer a, a, a basic lift block to get that up in the rear, or mm -hmm. our ux, upcoming RXT springs are going to solve that problem. And then you can customize the ride height you're going for. And again, you know, they're all looking the same once you get them all dialed. So it's um, the upper stages are really all about the performance of, of the suspension. Yeah. No, that is nice, especially for a guy who maybe wants to come in at a stage one or two and get that look, but doesn't need all the adjustability yet. And then the guy who does want that still gets the same kind of stance and there's no sacrifice, which is great. Exactly. And that brings me up to reminding me of something that uh, we do as well and very commonly done. Um, say brand new truck, you, you're just getting started, don't want to throw a bunch of money at it. You can start out with one of the lower stages, say with the internal reservoir front coilover. Sure. Later on down the line, you realize, hey, I, I want a little bit more. Instead of having to buy all new stuff, these are technically upgradable. Oh, so really? you can, uh, this can be changed out, the upper, I'm sorry, the top cap here. Okay. Can be changed out to accept the remote reservoir. And so we usually offer upgrade kits so that during regular maintenance of these, when you're rebuilding them sometime in the future, you can go ahead and upgrade them through a remote reservoir, put them right back on the truck. Uh, CDC valve is available for the same sort of configuration as well. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to have. It makes it uh, feel like you're not committing to something that's permanent right away. You can run that for a while, you know, have it on your truck for a year or two and then work your way up if you want to build exactly. it. Yeah, let's, let's, let's it grow with you. Um, you know, we, we were talking about it earlier. We're never really done with this sort of stuff. Exactly. You know? It's always a progression. <laughs> exactly. And uh, that's, that's something that we've, we try to design into this so that you don't spend a bunch of money to get it and then realize, hey, I, I want to do more without having to buy everything else all over again. So Absolutely. the kits are all designed to work together so you can upgrade as, as you see fit. Awesome. Well, Scott, thank you for coming in and walking us through all these different Ranger suspension options. I know this is super helpful for a lot of guys that are just jumping in to get in their truck modified and want to get something underneath to get a little bit of height and better off-road performance. If you guys are interested in taking a look at some of these Ranger kits in depth or want to poke around and look at the listings, we'll have links down in the description where you can check those kits out. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah.